Hi friends, this is Satya Paul Deepak. I teach Indian Polity at Shankar IAS Academy. This video is part of series of videos where our staff from Shankar IAS Academy is explaining how to approach the questions asked in UPSC preliminary examination. Then uh, certain questions can be answered by logic. Which of the following statement is are true of uh, the fundamental duties of Indian citizen? Okay, so they are talking about part 4 of Indian constitution. The legislative process has been provided to enforce uh, these uh, duties. Now here, you know, for some of the fundamental duties they have given legislative process. But that is the exception. What is the general nature here? Legislative process has not been given. Okay legislative has not been provided to enforce these duties specifically if they want especially exclusively they have to go to the parliament and create the law so the first statement will be wrong they are correlative to legal duties select the correct answer using the code given below so correlative to legal duties okay now fundamental duties is correlative to fundamental rights when you claim rights you have to do your duty also so there is some mutual relation okay legal duties means it is enforceable in the court of law. Okay, so here you know in the uh, second statement, their correlative to legal duties will be wrong because logically, legal duties are enforceable in the court of law, but not all fundamental rights. Though, so they are not correlative. So answer is neither one nor two. Yeah, the main confusion that you will have is some of the law. For example, if you insult the national flag, if you do not follow the flag code okay uh, or uh, if you act in a manner that is disrespect to the national anthem and the song you can be subjected to punishment there is a law so you may say that there is a legislative process for providing all the duties but is it not true for all the case right so generally it is uh, no legal process is given so don't worry about exceptions important rule don't worry about exceptions if you are having uh, you know and some exemptions come to your mind and if you are having a choice for going about which exemption or uh, whether to have a simple interpretation or uh, in depth interpretation remember the purpose of upsc examination is not to try you know test your in depth uh, knowledge your basic understanding in all the subjects okay so extreme uh, areas naturally they will not ask in the prelims examination unless it is in current affairs so remember don't worry about the exception go for simple interpretation so always remember this policy not only in polity questions but also for entire uh, the entire uh, prelims question paper keep this policy in mind keep it simple and sometimes stupid also okay meaning is go for the simplest interpretation when you have two interpretations mostly that will be correct okay because those who take question you know they do not sit with polity book uh, uh, day and night okay so they take only questions from the periphery okay or the simple basic concepts only they are going to be asked they won't test the exemptions unless and until it is in current affairs so remember that and have a simplistic understanding the next question in the context of india which one of the following is the correct relationship between rights and duties we just now we saw rights are correlated with duties yes rights are personal and hence independent of society and duties wrong statement rights is uh, individual in nature but it is not personal it is in relation of society only for example untouchability is there equality is there only when other person treats you equally right to equality is there only other person stop from practicing untouchability there is uh, uh, abolition of untouchability same way duties also cannot be excluded so second statement is wrong third rights not duties are important for the advancement of the personality of the citizen you would may appear in the first instance okay if a person is not following the duty personality uh, see in a country rights is primary compared to the duty because rights is a basic thing but however okay for the personality development of the citizen duties is also equally important so the statement is wrong so duties not rights are important for the stability of the state okay so when uh, socialistic or totalitarian state duties are given more primacy compared to rights but duties and uh, rights should be equal in order to have stability of the state otherwise there will be revolution so just like thinking no uh, about the consequences of what is the, there is only duties not rights what if there is rights but not duties you will be able to arrive at the answers that these statements are wrong 
So answer is A, option A. Now concept clarity is required. Which of the following statement is correct? Rights are claims of the state against the citizen. Okay. Now when the word you see the word against now immediately you feel that you know it is a negative word so it should not be there. Okay. Rights is something which is given by the state. Yes, but against the power of the state. Okay. So this concept clarity should be you should be having. This is a claim of question number 18. Which of the following statements are correct? Here rights are the claims of the citizen against the words against you would be saying here see it is not the claims of the state it is the claims of the citizens. Okay, So first statement would be wrong. Rights are privileges. Privileges means given for few. So it cannot be called as a rights. Okay, Rights are claims of the citizens against the state. Yes you may be confused with the word against. But remember against is right because rights helps in limitation of power of the state. Rights are privileges of few citizens against the many. Okay, Privilege of a few will not come. It is an unequal society. So you cannot call it as a right itself. So the answer, most appropriate answer would be C. Okay, fine. Now 50-50 type, that is two options you are able to un uh, arrive at. Okay, You are having a confusion between two. That is what I mention as 50-50 type questions. You will have two correct answers for it. UPSC says, says always when I have when you find that there are two uh, correct answers choose okay the best okay choose the best you have to choose the best best has to be choose now local self government can be best explained as an exercise of uh, federalism you know under federalism we have seen three tier federalism so you may say local self government is a tier of federalism but exactly not uh, federalism is about division of powers between two or more governments okay so not exactly federalism Democratic decentralization, yes, local self government, democratic decentralization. Administrative delegation, administrative delegation can be done to local government also. Okay, so whether always local self government is about administrative delegation, no, sometimes local governments can also be used. Delegation can be done from the political bureaucracy to the permanent bureaucracy, delegation can be done by the central government to state government, like the delegation can be possible in all levels, it does not only mention about local self government, that is why I said put the always filter, whether always local self government leads to administrative delegation, no in other aspects also administrative delegation can be done. Direct democracy, Okay, whether local self government is always talking about direct democracy, it is one aspect of direct democracy, we can have even representative democracy, whether always direct democracy is uh, related to local self government, no even representative democracy is also related to local self government, but always local self government emphasizes on democratic decentralization. So in this question you will be having a dilemma between B and D question. So put the question whether always okay, democratic decentralization is equal to local self government, yes. Whether direct democracy is always uh, equal to local self government, not necessarily sometimes representative democracy also may come. So here the best option is B, option B. In question number 20, okay, now by spirit of the constitution, okay, how to answer this 50-50 type, which, which means when you have two. Who or which of the following is the custodian of the constitution of India? Now here the students will have a dilemma whether it is Supreme Court of India or whether the President of India always. Because in one way the President of India, uh, his work is to defend the constitution. Whenever a law is created against the constitution, who strikes down the law? Supreme Court. Not only the legislative action, but also when there is an executive action, when the government is acting then also it is struck down by the judiciary only. So we may see that um, the Supreme Court of India is the custodian of constitution but whether this word is given in the Indian constitution, no, no explicit mention in the Indian constitution, very important to note, you know some online sources say that you know the article 124 to 127 says the Supreme Court is the custody of Indian constitution, no it talks about the powers okay and uh, the nature of you know what will be the Supreme Court, its composition and other things only, no part of the constitution says who is the custodian of the Indian constitution. So then what else you can go by okay then go by the spirit of the constitution, if you go by the spirit of the constitution okay oath taking of the president we can take, the oath taking of the Supreme Court of India we can take, the, when the president is taking oath he says that he will protect preserve and defend the Indian constitution. Whereas the Supreme Court they take the hold uh, saying that they will uphold the constitution. 
okay this is one part of their uh, oath taking the other part they'll say they have, will be protecting the unity integrity and sovereignty of the country okay and they will give judgment uh, without fear and favor and third part they will say uphold the constitution now upholding the constitution is whenever there is a problem in the constitution or when executive and legislative action is against the constitution supreme court is there for rescuing it but overall in charge of the constitution is president that you can infer by this i said no when there is no explicit mention explicit constitutional provision of the constitution no need to go by letter you can go by the interpretation so comparatively a holistic uh, protection is given by the president of india see but now after uh, 1978 44th amendment act we are saying that everything is anything is done by the prime minister in the name of president so you may be you know uh, interfering that the president is not the custodian of constitution more than him practically the supreme court is but here that is why since there is no explicit constitutional provision go by the spirit what is the purpose of office of president to ensure that a constitutional government is in place what do you mean by a constitutional government a constitutional government is one which has the majority in the lok sabha and decides based on constitutional provision okay so we have a wise person sitting as the president of india politically experienced person to uh, you know share his experience to the prime minister who may take a decision overlooking the constitution okay so by spirit you can find and you can say it is the president of india as the now this is a 50 50 type remember when you face such a question as i told you already the other thing may be also correct sometimes but you think some logic and put the answer and come mostly it will be correct what if upsc takes the other stand other argument okay telling that every day executive legislative action uh, which is against the constitution is corrected by the supreme court of india like that if some interpretation is given by upsc it will not happen if it is happening my suggestion is in case of interpretation based question either one you answer and come by logic okay mostly it will be correct even if it is not some four five questions four or five questions you are answering based on 50 50 type most of the questions say three to four questions you will be getting correct so ultimately you will end up at additional marks so questions like this do take it up okay mark the right answer according to the logic if you find that two answers are correct then uh, very important very important inform to use upsc as soon as possible from last year onwards they have given an option if you have an contestation on a question and if you have a problems in option you should notify it to the upsc when upsc finds you know the particular question is having a dilemma or uh, there is a possibility of two questions they may reconsider the question okay so some of you may think that okay there are many people like 10 lakh people riding or in reality okay 5 lakh will be attending the uh, preliminary examination some 50 to 60 serious candidates 60000 serious candidates are there they will be going and complaining so uh, let us not don't think like that when there is maximum number of representation only upsc will be induced to reconsider the question okay so in case of you know questions like this immediately reported to the upsc okay but however by logic by you know overall holistic by applying the spirit we can uh, boil down the answer to be a now another important thing state government related state legislature related chapter high court subordinate court these areas they frequently ask question because usually we will study the union government supreme court in depth completely but we will not deal with these areas so most of the prelims question no uh, if you find that when questions is asked in this area students will uh, uh, find it difficult so your preparation strategy in this 20 days concentrate in this area in the state government area uh the statement one the legislative council of a state in india can be larger in size than half of the state le- legislative assembly of that particular state see legislative council should be one third of its size that we know uh, that is why when once we have read you know the basic provisions of state legislative council this is a very easy question to answer the governor of a state nominates the chairman of legislative council of the uh you know particular state the chairman of the legislative council is elected okay from among their members okay he is not nominated he is not nominated so first statement is wrong second is wrong in case of rajya sabha we have vice president we know vice president is elected okay by a separate collegium 
So here also you may have a doubt what about the chairman of the legislative council is elected from among its members there is no role for state legislative assembly ok. Now remember in polity always uh, when you prepare in the final minutes of preparation compare and study when you read state government uh, like deputy chairman how deputy sorry when you read about the chairman of uh, the legislative council see what are the provisions of Indian constitution is there for the vice president ok. So, that will help you in the memory next once again 50 50 rule keyword ok once again if there is a 50 50 question you are able to arrive at two options uh, you are confused between choosing one of the options ok look for the keyword in this question the keyword is the fundamental object of Panjaiti Raj is because Panjaiti Raj helps in people's participation in development yes political accountability yes it will come democratic decentralization will come financial mobilization also will come oh, sorry financial mobilization will not come that is not a fundamental principle ok the basic principle is democratic decentralization only because financial mobilization is left to the discretion of state legislative assembly so fourth one will not come so already you have eliminated two now you have a option between option A and option C ok 1 2 3 only and 1 and 3 only so now the doubt is whether 2 will come or not that is what you have to decide upon ok 1 and 3 we already know and uh, this is only we are having a doubt political accountability will it come or not now in case of 50 50 now A or C we are having a problem look for the keywords in the question fundamental object of Panjaiti Raj system ok the Panjaiti Raj system ensures which among the following like that if the question has been asked then all 3 will come but the fundamental object of Panjaiti Raj is to have political participation in development and democratic decentralization. So, answer is C 1 and 3 only ok it will not be political accountability ok in this type of interpretation ok because uh, the political accountability can uh, uh, can be ensured uh, by other means also by legislature other things Panjaiti Raj is you know more than a accountability body it is a body of planning it is a body of decision making if you see state legislative assembly or state legislature or parliament they have two function one is to make law and to make the government accountable how by asking questions but for uh, panjaiti raj pr it is decision making and planning so political accountability will come for the state legislature and the parliament only ok. So, look for the keyword then you will be able to arrive at ok fine. So, next question ok eliminating through option 50 50 type of questions how to eliminate it through option which of the following are the discretionary powers given to the governor of the state this discretionary powers is a big uh, problem because president also has some discretionary powers the constitution would say but after 1978. 44th amendment act constitutional amendment act they have clearly mentioned the president should act only on the aid and advice of the union council of ministers but for the governor he has some discretionary powers which is mentioned explicitly in the constitution ok. So, sending the report to the president for India for imposing presidential rule yes is a discretionary power appointing the ministers is not a discretionary power he has to listen to the chief minister reserving certain bills passed by the state legislature for consideration of the president of India yes that is also is a discretionary power ok. So, now clearly you know appointing the ministers is not a discretionary power so 2 will not come ok. So, wherever 2 eliminate it ok wherever appointing the ministers is not a discretionary power ok because uh, fourth statement making the rules to conduct the business of the state government ok here one of the powers of the governor is he makes the rules ok one of the administrative powers of governors is to make rules of how his decisions should be implemented or orders should be implemented. So, this word is there so we may think that you know it is the discretion of the governor to make make it. So, this also you may be thinking it is a discretionary power ok. So, you may be thinking 1, 3 and 4 is the answer say there is a doubt now ok. But here they are not given in you know, decisions of 
governor they say conduct the business of the state government conduct of the business of the state governments is with the chief minister so here the students may get a uh, confusion whether to understand this as a discretionary power or not okay so if you are sticking with the fourth uh, interpretation now the solution is go to the option and see okay through the options whether you are able to arrive the answer you are one thing for sure appointing the ministers is not discretionary power of the governor it is a binding power of the governor so two will not come so two will not come a in two is there c is there d is there automatically you arrive the answer b is the answer simple so sometimes when upsc gives a murkier statement a statement of confusion that would confuse the aspirants don't worry you know always there will be options to help you so 50 50 type of questions when you are having dilemma in interpretation go and eliminate through option that is the best way of and uh, answering any question don't leave such questions and come you no know, because uh, you know certain points here for definitive and and as you know when more points are given definitely easy uh, would be the answer read the question and options completely okay once again which of the following are functions of cabinet secretary usually you read uh, polity you know they read about cabinet committees cabinet secretary you won't secretary you won't read but by logic you can answer okay questions like this which is out of the blue you know questions will be very simple one preparation of agenda for cabinet meetings yes secretarial assistant meaning maintaining documents providing documents uh, providing adequate information for decision making in the cabinet is done by the secretary secretarial assistance is done by cabinet com- committees allocation of financial resources to the ministers this is done by cabinet committee on economic affairs or by the cabinet not by the cabinet secretariat now this word you know some people will read which of the following uh, is are the functions of the cabinet and will say uh, allocation of financial resources to the ministry is also you have to read the question completely and moreover by logic you can say that allocation of financial resources is not done by the secretary secretarial work only will be done okay so answer is c 1 and 2 only consider the following uh, statements regarding a no conference motion in india uh, this question c there is a, this is also 50 50 type okay the problem okay so according to upsc key okay they are saying there is no mention of no conference motion in indian constitution of india yes a motion of no conference motion can be introduced in lok sabha only for this also they have said yes answer is c according to upsc but now the dilemma is there here they have used the word only see remember in c sat in other subjects you can strictly take the word only geography and all the word only these are like sweeping statements right so you can take it strictly and you know you can say this is not at all possible because there will be some exemptions but in polity generally they say casual statements they will make okay casual statements okay casual statements they will be making okay the examiner sometimes when he is taking the question he will be keeping in mind about no conference motion only in the union government okay so he uh, just wants to ask you a question on no conference motion so first statement he makes there is no mention of no conference motion in in constitution of india yes it is uh, there by rules of procedure in parliament so the statement is correct second motion of no conference motion can be introduced lok sabha only yes in relation to rajya sabha now this is where uh, you know students will ask so how to identify whether this only is uh, specifically used or whether they are making a causal statement and then address the core of question that is why just if you want to know what the word, meaning of the word see other subjects only means only it's a sweeping statement you can take decision clearly on only on the basis of the word but in case of polity you just go by the context address the core of the question now what this consider the following statements regarding no conference motion in india no conference motion in india so he is interested to talk about the no conference motion that is passed its general characteristics the no conference motion uh, general characteristics will be passed in the lower house only not the upper house so in that context you will have to go by now you may ask so what if upsc is interpreting the other way it says only so the upsc says no one in state legislative assembly also no conference motion can be introduced okay like that you know if a question you know is arise like that interpretation is taken up that is why i said it is a 50 50 type of question you are not you are, you are having a confusion whether to interpret in a casual way or the exception way as i so told you already go for simple interpretation that is safe always 90% of the time it will come correct okay it's rare that you will get the, the answer in the wrong manner okay otherwise also th- if this one question is wrong you know as i said 
supposing a f 4 to 5 questions like this you are taking up okay 3 to 4 questions will be correct so if, even if you are losing in this question other questions you will be do not leave this question and come such questions okay either are questions when you are able to boil down to one or two options okay or you have doubt only on one single statement then do not leave it complete the question and come and question number 26 according to the constitution of India which of the following are fundamental for uh, the governance of the country okay now fundamental rights whether it is fundamental yes fundamental duties yes directive principles of state policy yes fundamental rights and the fundamental duties they have asked that also is correct okay all of them will uh, be correct only but okay according to the constitution of India what is fundamental for the governance of the country okay it is that directive principles of state policy why this po alone gives the positive measures or how governance should be carried out by the government okay always whether put always filter no once, once again whether always fundamental rights uh, is the fundamental for the governments of the con country no apart from fundamental rights you should be having other measures also only fundamental duties only uh, no always fundamental duties alone will it be fundamental for the governance no but directive principles of state policy always okay is fundamental for the governance in the country uh, for example citizens are you know excelling in individual pursuit this is a fundamental duty okay, whether it is fundamental for governance the individual may or may not you know involve in uh, excellence in individual pursuit or collective pursuit okay so fundamental duties need not always okay is fundamental fundamental for the governance fundamental rights okay so certain fundamental rights okay you know like freedom of speech and expression actually has a limitation on the governance okay it's mostly fundamental rights are negative in character only dpsp is talking about positive that is why by using the word fundamental for the governance the keyword by using the filter always filter we are arriving at the answer c now this one now the chairman and the deputy chairman of Rajya Sabha are not the members of that house now here looking now you will read fastly leave the word deputy chairman and go in polity most of the time this mistake you will make okay casual error this error has to be avoided okay just look into the exact words yes, chairman is given deputy chairman is also given chairman is not a member but deputy chairman is a member of Rajya Sabha so this statement is wrong the second statement while the nominated members of the two houses of the parliament have no voting rights yes they do not have voting rights in the presidential election yes right they have right to vote in the election of vice president see now longer questions always divided into two and c okay because together you read you may not understand but the, both the statements are correct here first statements they do not have voting rights in the presidential election they have the right to vote in the election of the vice president statement is correct answer is two only okay now uh, supposing a statement is given comma is given another statement is given like that okay sometimes they ask especially in csat paper in earlier in one of the polity uh, gs1 paper also they have asked like this so if you want to understand the meaning no you remove the in between content and read the sentence this first part of the sentence and the third part of the sentence together you will understand the meaning so that is how you have to understand so wherever there is a comma make a pass divide and then read it separately for your better understanding okay so this question I have taken you know to tell you that sometimes you may make mistake because of not reading the question fully ensure that you are completing the question uh, complete reading of the question is done okay uh, twice ensure that you have read the question correctly and uh, decided on that question whether it is correct or not then mark the answer now this was a question that is asked in 2012 okay which of the following is under the union list regulation of labor safety and mines and oil fields agriculture fisheries public health now they have asked you know from union list now question uh, from your side will be sir whether to read all these union list state list concurrent list other things and all no current affairs is the key okay so at that time there was uh, you know uh, mine accident now recently also this year also the same thing is there okay the rat hole mining right in Meghalaya okay uh, now who has to regulate the labor safety in mines and oil fields central government so when an incident is happening uh, flood is happening a cyclone is draft is happening immediately go and see under which list it is who is responsible for taking the action whether it is a state government or whether it is a central government 
So usually newspapers, central government will be blame the state, state will blame center, but you have to know which list it comes under, which government is responsible. In that way they may ask the question. So that year there was a rat hole mining uh, was take, taking place and there was a flood in the uh, uh, mining places, mining field and that is why they have asked this question. Okay, So whoever read the news will know it is the duty of the central government and it comes under. So otherwise also we know agriculture fisheries public health, but if they are going to give you know some uh, difficult options okay still you can uh, boil down by current affairs if questions of memory is asked that will be purely based on current affairs only so as, as it uh, told in the first question concentrate on current affairs for your polity preparation okay now fundamental rights and directive principles of uh, uh, state policy I, I actually the, the question is different i just wanted to talk something on fr and dpsp that is why i put this uh, topic see fundamental rights and directive principles of state policy need not memorize some of you may ask uh, whether they will ask the article, they do not ask the article and uh, then what you must know which one comes under fundamental rights, which one comes in DPSP, which one comes under fundamental duties. To do that when you read itself you know you just uh, imagine think through each one of these points. So, in an examination hall you can easily find out which comes under fundamental right, which comes under directive principles of state policy. They may give 4 points and in one of the points they may say uh, give DPSP other points will be fundamental rights. You should be able to identify which one is what that can be done just by thinking through on FR, DPSP and other things. Okay, So, do not break your mind uh, you know, trying to memorize the articles and uh, the sequence of fundamental rights, DPSP and fundamental duties. Just think, think through, just imagine okay, that there is a provision. For example, uh, fundamental uh, duties is there wherein you have to respect the national flag. Imagine that you know that you have to respect the national flag. In fact, you are not doing it, you will be punished. Just that thinking you will know that it is there. Okay, uh, fundamental duty, strive for excellence, individual and collective pursuit, scientific temper, spirit of inquiry. For each one point, think of something, then definitely you will be remembering in the examination. Questions from this area can be easily dealt with. Question number 29. In India, other than ensuring that public funds are used efficiently and for intended purposes, what is the importance of Office of Comptroller and Auditor General, CAG? Okay, now here. CAG exercise exchequer control on behalf of the parliament when the president of India declares national emergency and financial emergency. This is where you have to read the question. When big questions are there, read completely. First statement is wrong. Okay, why it is wrong? Because national emergency, not only during national emergency and uh, financial emergency, okay, the CAG does not exercise any of the uh, control, direct control, even during national emergency or financial emergency. CAG reports on the execution of projects or programs initiated by ministries are discussed by public accounts committee. Yes, the statement is correct. Information from CAG reports can be used by investigation into press charges against those who have violated the law while uh, managing public uh, finances. Okay, the charges exactly cannot be used. It can be, you know, used after like there is a uh, complaint. Okay, but the complaint is not uh, finalized. The purpose of CAG is enabling the parliament to make the government accountable. The fourth statement while dealing uh, with the audit and accounting of government companies CAG has certain judicial powers for prosecuting their who are violating law wrong that also will not come. Okay. Now the question the problem is you will be having a trouble with second option and third option you will be saying sir 2G spectrum case was there. So after CAG report only investigation charged. Okay. Now based on CAG okay, input the government can initiate investigation but pressing charges can be done only when there is some confirmation or uh, investigation has resulted in some uh, credible evidence. So, the importance of CAG is the second statement and finally, uh, uh, exception C do not worry about exceptions I said you know just go for the general statements. With reference to delimitation commission consider the following statement the orders of the delimitation commission cannot be challenged in a court of law right. When the orders of delimitation commission are laid before the Lok Sabha or state legislative assembly they cannot affect any modifications in orders ok any modifications this is a direct verbatim ok according to the constitution nothing but you know by logic itself you can answer because delimitation commission suppose you know any boundaries are drawn of constituencies and if it is questioned by court of law you cannot conduct elections. Same way parliament also is uh, modifying the boundaries the MPs may modify the boundaries of the constituencies according to their wishes. State legislative assembly 
or uh, Lok Sabha cannot make any modification in that orders both 1 and 2 is uh, correct ok fine now this exceptions in this whenever you are reading a statement read for the basic meaning of the statement ok do not worry about the exceptions ok uh, for example they will be given the statement uh, MPs of the Lok Sabha can be disqualified for dis, uh, defection now speaker cannot be disqualified right but you may be thinking ok speaker is also an MP so he uh, you know cannot be disqualified by anti defection law so the statement that ok uh, MP can be disqualified by anti defection law just because of speaker office is there you cannot say the statement is wrong this statement is correct MP can be disqualified by anti defection law ok just speaker is an MP you may not be thinking twice ok that is why I am saying do not worry about the exemptions ok so these kind of you know see these principles you keep in mind apply the same principle for all the questions dear students we have uh, discussed the 30 questions as of now we have seen various uh, problems that would be faced by the aspirants while dealing with polity questions and uh, how the techniques to overcome with the example of all previous uh, UPSC prelims question. Now uh, the important point is before going to the examination hall kindly remember list out these approaches that you are going to have in the examination hall and remember consistently follow the approaches sometimes some of the aspirants will apply these principles when they remember for some questions they go for a ad hoc principle or ad hoc approach or just like that they put uh, whatever answer they want ok or whichever answer appears to be them uh, like correct like that they will do apply some logical reasoning so that the probability of your answer coming correct is higher and uh, another big mistake that you people will do uh, the last minute of preparation you will concentrate on a single subject or two subjects remember you have to cover all major subjects for the UPSC prelims examination so out of 15 questions in polity if you are able I said you will be able to definitely attend 12 questions you will be worried about these extra three questions which is going to be interpretative in nature only when you have read only polity and other subject supposing if you have read all the major subjects polity economy uh, modern Indian history ok environment and geography what happens is in all these 80 80 percentage questions you will be getting c 12 into 4 48 to 50 questions will be there and current affairs also will help you so easily you can cross over the prelims cutoff mark so keep in mind that you are going to concentrate in your preparation last leg of preparation in all major subjects four major subjects as well as in the examination also when you take up questions take questions from all the subjects to maximize your uh, appearance in mains examination with this I would like to conclude I wish all of you a very all the best for the coming preliminary examination 2019 thank you